I made another video for this exposition, but it ended up being one hour long. And it was like, that. Yeah, I'm not going to submit this video. I decided to go for something short that more people watch it. And inspired by this video from the last year called Amazing Wrong Proof for the Peak Theorem, I decided to go for something not completely correct, but something interesting, something that is a bit hand wavy, but yeah, I, I really like it. It is about Pythagorean triangles. So just to recall, what was a Pythagorean triangle? It was a triangle whose sides are integer satisfying this equation. A squared plus B squared equal to C squared. And we are going to count the number of these triangles whose hypotenuse is less than a given number called N. And just to clarify, we are looking for only primitive Pythagorean triangles. What I mean by primitive is that you are not allowed to cheat by multiplying the sides to a fixed number. So, for example, from this famous Pythagorean triangle, you can cheat and make another one. Six, eight, ten. But this is not allowed. We are looking for those whose sides are co-prime. So A and B do not have any common divisor except for one. And there is a theorem by Lehmer in 1900 saying that this number is asymptotically equal to n over 2, wait for it, pi. And yeah, when I was, when I saw it, I said, yeah, how come pi showed up here again? But then I became a bit more irritated and I realized that the reason you see pi here is that there was a pi in denominator and a pi squared in denominator and they canceled each other and now you see one pi b. Classic. So let's go to the proof justification, not the proof. Before that, I should yeah, recall a well-known result. I'm not going to prove that, but I yeah, just uh, share the, the statement. But starting with this famous high school identity. And his brother. You see that we have lots of squares here. So it's a bit tempting to rewrite this like It's minus one square plus four x y. So this is a square. This is a square. Four is a square, but x and y are really good party. But you can change your variables. And now you have a infinite family of solutions for Pythagorean equation. And the theorem that I was talking about is saying that every solution for Pythagorean equation, a squared plus b squared equal to c squared, is in this form. More precisely, it says that there is a one-to-one -one correspondence between uh, between primitive Pythagorean triangles and x, y, z that are all positives. Moreover, x and y are co-prime also. And at the same time, 
one of them, say x, is an even number. Because, yeah, first of all, x and y cannot be even both because they are co-prime. And they cannot be odd at the same time also. Because if they are odd, yeah, this guy and this guy are also even. So you create some common divisors here. So accepting this result, we can see, we can count the number of triangles. So first of all, remember that we were interested in triangles with C less than N. And C was corresponding to X squared plus Y squared less than N. And now you can see where the first pi comes from. This is the equation from circle. But we know that X and Y are both positives. So we are interested in number of integer X and Y in this section of the circle. And this should be almost the same as the area of this circle because you can surround each point with a square of size one. Then the area of this, this sum of these squares should be the same as the number of the points, which is almost the same as the area of the, this section of the circle. So what is the area of this section? It's pi times oh, by the way, the radius of this circle was the square root of n over 4. But we didn't need all of the points. We had two more conditions. We had uh, x and y should be coprime, and also x should be even. There is a wonderful video on triple one run. I'm sure you have all seen them. Saying that the chance, the probability that X and Y are co-prime is this famous friend of us. And I'm going to cheat a bit here. But what is the, given the chance, given the fact that they are co-prime, what is the chance that two is dividing X? So notice that if they are co-prime, there are three possible options. X is odd, Y is even, X is even, Y is odd, and X is odd, and Y is The reason is that they cannot be both even because they are co-prime. And the cheating is here. I'm going to assume that all of these three cases are equally likely. So what is the chance that 2 divides x? It's 1 over 3 options. And if you simplify this friend, you have 6 here, 3 here, 4 here, and pi n over 2 pi square, which is what we are looking for, n over 2 pi. And that was it.